And uh, these are orange pants. No, I got that. <laughs> Jonathan won't let me forget it. He's colorblind anyway. He's, a, he's colorblind. He's out there. Don't forget, Jonathan. They're in the orange family. They're not orange. Thank you. See, he can't, he can't tell colors. All right. They're like, uh, they're nice. They're rust. <laughs> they're managed rust. <laughs> Like copper. Like copper, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> copper. Costs more to get that color. Gray. All right. That's right, thank you. Highly, uh, highly color coordinated. Now this morning, friends, we're going to, uh, you may have noticed, we haven't really gotten to the last day events yet. We haven't gotten to Sunday Law. We haven't gotten to the thick of things, thank you. Into the thick of, into the thick of things. Um, thank you. Into the thick of things. So we're going to uh, still not go into the thick of things. We're kind of on the outskirts getting ready and informed to begin our study. I'll pray we'll begin. All right, dear Father in heaven, we need sober minds this morning. Help us not to be uh, drinking the wine of Babylon, but the straight, narrow truth that comes from heaven. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now you got to put on your thinking cap this morning. By the way, when I, get, when I showed you that my little diagram is so small you can't read it. You can't cheat on it because you can't see it. But everything I wrote there, reference after reference after statement after statement to prove why I think what I think. So let's say uh, Aisha comes up to it and you say, well you have on there that the, uh, the loud cry, has, is power is given to the loud cry by the latter rain. And I would say to you, that's right, because, hmm, 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 Acts 2, 19, hmm, 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 hmm. You've got to be able to do that, right? Because if you don't, your foundation is what? Yeah, sand. Thank you. Now, she read this morning, your name, the reputation written in the sand, which passes away. Now... We're ready to start. This morning our study is the rapture and the 144,000. So you got to be very attentive this morning. Second chance, my question, is God the God of second chances? Does he give second chances? All right, now very carefully, let's try to uh, nail this down. The dark ages started when? And what made them dark? You remember? Yes, the, the removal of God. Basically, the removal of God. We read this statement. The accession of the Roman church to power marked the beginning of the Dark Ages. The ascension, if you're going to look at the dates, you know, we put the date 538. Five, you, you, I, I'm not arguing about the date. Around, you know, 538. 538. There are 1,260 years where that church was persecuted in the wilderness, ending in 1798. Now, that's Adventist theology. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it biblical? Now, 538, 1798, 1260 days of darkness. Mm -hmm. Different places in the Bible call it time, time, and half a time. Mm -hmm. uh, 42 months, different places. It's that, it's that figure. Mm -hmm. Dark ages marked the beginning mm -hmm. of ascension to papal power. Mm -hmm. We read that. There's a statement that said that. Okay. okay. Now, pretty simple. The unpardonable sin, is there such a thing? Yes. yes. That's a controversial subject. Let's try to be very non-controversial. Matthew 12, 31. I say unto you, okay, all the sin and blasphemy, you can forgive. You, can, you sin against me, you blaspheme against me, that can be forgiven. But Jesus said, but you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, and that can't be forgiven. Do you see the difference between the two? Yes. 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 Now, verse 32, who will read? And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. No, that's the unpardonable sin. We say, well, it's, it's blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. All right, mm -hmm. that's pretty simple. Now, let's get some details. What constitutes the sin against the Holy Ghost? It is willfully attributing to Satan the work of the Holy Spirit. For example, suppose that uh, one is a witness of the special work of the, of the Spirit of God. He has convincing evidence that the work is in harmony with the Scriptures, and the Spirit, and the Spirit witnesses with his Spirit that it is of God. Afterward, however, he falls under temptation, pride, self-sufficiency, or some other evil trait controls him. 
Let's say this takes something you have conviction over. You tell me you got in conviction over anything, the spirit witness with your spirit, you saw it in the Bible. You got conviction over anything? Mm -hmm. Name something. Um, anything. Diet. All right, diet. All right. Then the Holy Ghost has spoken to you. Mm -hmm. You don't want to sin against the Holy Ghost. Now, I've got one, uh, drinking. For me to go back to the beer joint, mm, Spirit of God has made it very plain to me, right, that it's wrong. That's important, right? Yeah. Well, that wasn't the Spirit. That was just uh, that was just opinions. People, you know, no. The very big difference between influence from above and influence from peer pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, it is through the medium of His Spirit. I didn't finish that. He declares that that which he had before acknowledged to be the power of the Holy Spirit was the power of Satan. It is through the medium of His Spirit that God works upon the human heart. And when men willfully reject the Spirit and declare it to be from Satan, they cut off the channel by which God can communicate with them. Can God forgive any sin? Yes, except the one that is... Yes, but I was going to word it differently. Except the one that is not confessed. Because the Holy Spirit brings conviction. What you're doing is wrong. Diet, alcohol, whatever. And then you confess it and God forgives it. How are you ever going to confess when you got no conviction? You can't have conviction except the Holy Ghost. He can, you, every sin is, come on, murder, rape, robbery, every sin is forgiven. Look at Paul. And that's a gift. And, that's repentance. A gosh, a gift. Repent. and repentance is a gift. Yeah. It's all a gift. It's all grace. But the active agent is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You're doing something wrong? Me and the beer joint? The Holy Ghost speaking to my heart? This is not right. Nah, that's not the Lord speaking to me. Mm. That's the danger. Now, is the Holy Ghost persistent? Yeah. Well, it takes a long time to grieve the yeah. Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm like, he ain't persistent. <laughs> they cut off the channel by which, see what it says, they cut off the channel by which God can communicate with them. By denying the evidence which God has been pleased to give them, they shut out the light which has been shining in their hearts and as a result, they are left in darkness. Thus, the words of Christ are verified. No way to fish me out of the beer joint except the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And when you cut that fishing line, there's no other line God has. Mm -hmm. That's the Holy Ghost job, among other things. Mm -hmm. Thus, the words of Christ are verified. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? For a... There it is. Who read the next sentence? For a time, <clears throat> persons who have committed this sin may appear to be children of God. That's it. But when circumstances arise to develop character and show what manner of spirit they are. So you can't tell by looking at somebody if they, because they, they appear for a time to be children of God. Mm -hmm. What manner of spirit they are, continue. Um, what manner of spirit they are of, it will be found that they are on the enemy's ground standing under his black banner. Not, not manifested immediately, right? Now, the dark ages began, began when? When the Rome ascended to power. God's word removed. Papal power, teachings of men put in their place. Number two, is there an unpardonable sin? Yes. Grieving the Holy Ghost. Rejecting the Holy Ghost. Now, Daniel 9.24, we put it all together. Daniel 9.24, 70 weeks are determined upon whose people? What kind of people? The, the Jews, right? We know this points to a time when the Jews are going to be what? Cut right off. What was their sin? There's only one that will cut you off. What was your sin? Rejection of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Stephen said. As their 70 years had hit their limit and they were cut off, the moment just before they were cut off, what did Stephen say? That's it. You've done what? You do always resist the Holy Ghost. That's it. And then he's dead man. They murdered him. His dying words, you always reject the Holy Ghost. Now we're going to kill you. 
And that marked the end. Seventy weeks are determined, and that marked the end, Daniel 9.24. Now, Dark Ages begin, 538, 1260 years of persecution by papal power. The church was taken where? Into the wilderness. God kept it safe. The Jews had been cut off at the end of 70 weeks, 490 years. What was the event? The stoning of Stephen. There is an unpardonable sin. Jews committed it as a nation, and they were cut off. Any questions so far? Pretty simple. Now, uh, review and Herald, July 5. Judas' last chance was what? Now gone. That was it. Had he committed the unpardonable sin? Yeah. Yes. He did. I don't know what he appeared to look like at the time, but in the end he was hanging from a tree. But he did. Where is that in the Bible? Somebody read Hosea 4.17. Ephraim is joined to idols, let him alone. Now, there is a point of no return, okay? And that is a biblical doctrine. <coughs> now, I'm going to take 10 minutes on the 144,000 and the rest of the class on the rapture. And they kind of go together. Revelation 14, 1. By the way, 144,000 mentioned in the Bible two times. Revelation 7, mm -hmm. Revelation 14. Only two times in the Bible you see that number. It's mentioned by implication in Revelation 15. We'll get to that in a moment. Revelation 14, verse 1. Somebody help me by reading. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sinai, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand. It's about to get to in verse four that on their forehead, you know, God's name is written there. Mm -hmm. In Revelation seven one two and three, where it mentions one hundred forty four thousand, they are sealed in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. Same thing, same group, same same, yeah, same. Now. In the last great conflict of the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off. Give me some earthly supports. Name one or two or three or four or five. Paycheck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah money. Big fat savings account. Paycheck. Give me another one. Yeah, sure. Give me another. Do you feel more secure when your bank account's fat? Yeah. I do. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Right now, you know, we're, we're struggling to, we're almost at a point of no return, not no return, we're almost at a point of being broke again. Mm -hmm. You know, for a while there, we had, you know, I mean, there's money in the bank, and no problems. Now, how much we had, darling, can we pay the bills? Uh, Give me another one. Uh, food? Yeah. Medical? Sure. Mm -hmm. How about, I'll name some now, too. How about friends and family? Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. How about you people, you members at a church? When your friends, your family, people in the church, your money cuts off, everything, every, how many supports be cut off? Every. every single one. Anything you've got to lean on is now gone. It is not here yet, is it? Okay. But the day's coming when it will be. Yeah. The church upon the earth is not perfect. We've read that, you said. Yeah, we're getting ready for something else today. It's not perfect. It's called the church what? Okay. It's not yet the church what? Right. But it believe one day that it will be, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Amen. yeah, by God's grace, yes. miracle working power. Mm -hmm. Now, help me, the church is what? Militant. Keep reading. Now we are confronted with a world in midnight darkness, almost wholly given over to idolatry. But the day is coming in which the battle will have been fought, the victory won. The will of God is to be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Ooh, Luke 11, verse 2. Thy will be done, where? On earth as it is in heaven. Finally, that prayer is going to be answered. Jesus said, this is how you pray. Pray this way. One day your prayers will be answered. Mm -hmm. The problem's not him, it's us. Mm -hmm. and one more. 144,000, Revelation 7. I'll read verse 4, I'll read 14, 1. Somebody go back up and read 7, 2. I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. With him, he had how many? The lamb had 144,000. Now, somebody read Revelation 7, verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. 
And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Now, next question. To have the seal of the living God, does that mean you have his character? Yes. You're sealed in his character. That's it. Pretty simple. Now, 15.2. This does not say the 144,000. I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast. Come on. All right, they got the victory over the beast. These aren't people living in the days of David and Saul, right? They got the victory over the beast. Uh, well, what the mark of the beast has been given for thousands of years, right? Never has been given yet. Never has been given. They got the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark. This is not at the beginning. This has to be where? At the end, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Now, is that the 144,000? You do not have to wonder. There is a plain statement. And they sing a new song before the throne, the song which no man can learn from the hundred, save the 144,000. Yeah, they're singing. The ones that are singing, the 144,000. Now, what we're going to read now is the best description of who the 144,000 are that I've read anywhere in my life. It gives you a whole lot of details of who they are. I'll read it and then ask you question after question, okay? The answers to the questions are in what we're going to read. They sing a new song before the throne, a song which no man can learn save the 144,000. Why can no one learn that song but them? Thank you. That's it. It's a song of their experience. Nobody ever had that experience except Christ. He lived without an intercessor. And so that, now she's about to make that point. I'm getting ahead of myself. It is the song of Moses. I'm not trying to equate Christ to 140,000. He had troubles they'll never know about. You know, it is the song of Moses and the Lamb, a song of deliverance. None but the 144,000 can learn that song. And that's why, Sister Mara, I agree with you. Because God said it. You agreed with God, I agree with you. We'll always agree with each other if we can agree with God. Trouble in the church? We need to get in sync with God. None but the 144,000 can learn that song, for it is a song of their experience, an experience such as no other company have ever had. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever He goeth. These are the 144,000 in heaven will be going around with Jesus to eternal ages. What will they be doing? Not sure. <laughs> These, next question, what's it mean to be translated? Taken up. Um, alive. Sure. Not seeing death. Okay, taking up alive, not seeing death. Who's translated? The saints. Give me another name for Yes, I agree, yes. Yeah, we read now. These have been translated from the earth. The 144,000 of those that were translated. How do I know? I just read it. From among the living are counted as the first fruits unto God in the land. Will he resurrect some folks too? Yes. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are translated, 144,000. Well, wait a minute. You mean they never died? Well, no. Well, what about the seven last plagues falling? They'll be here. They'll be here. They'll live through the plagues, right? Mm -hmm. These are they which came out of great tribulation. They have passed through the time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation. They have endured the anguish of the time of Jacob's trouble. They have stood without a... There it is, intercessor, through the final outpouring of God's judgments. But they have been delivered, for they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's a picture of the church. Triumphant. Thank you. I'm glad you didn't say militant, right? It's the church triumphant. You know, that's the, did, he finally, God, did the Lord finally do it? Yes. Evidently, right? Translated, right? Uh, don't see death. Go with the Lamb where there ever she goeth. Right? 144,000. Character like His. Pass through the plagues. The experience to see Him come in the air. All these things they do. Well, we add something to it. They kept coming to Mrs. White. And they said, Is it a literal 
or a symbolic no, no, a number? Is it 144,000 real people? Or is this like a symbolic number? 12 times 12, 140. Is it symbolic or literal? And the answer she always gave was, take a guess. I, it's in three words. I don't know. Sister Mark, can you see that from back there? So I'll let you read that down to the ellipse, that first part. I have no light on the subject. I'll put it in brackets, and she was explaining the 144,000. How literal or symbolic? Don't know. Don't know. Tell my brethren, I don't know because I have not been I mean, given any light. I haven't been shown, I haven't been told. Now that tells me she wasn't just holding it back. God didn't say, this is it, but don't tell people. Keep this one, you know, she didn't know. Please tell my brethren, I have nothing presented before me regarding the circumstances. Now pause. The way is made so clear that none need err. The things you need to know are made most. And she said, I don't have a clue. Does that tell me that's a minor point? Yes. You know, it really, what's the difference? What if it's 144,000 folks or 200,000? I don't know. I don't strive to be one of them, right? It may be 20, maybe 200,000, maybe 2 million. I don't know. She didn't know. And if she doesn't know, friends, and the Bible doesn't say, then it's for sure you don't know. Yeah. Now, it's going to happen. There's nothing wrong with saying, I wonder if it's literal or symbolic. I wonder. You know? I wonder what a heaven's going to be like. <laughs> I wonder about a lot of things. <laughs> but should we, should Christian and I have an argument over what we're wondering about? Because <laughs> I'm not sure, neither is she. Please tell my brethren that I have nothing for me regarding the circumstances concerning which they write. And I can set before them only that which has been presented to me. He, God didn't tell me, I can't tell you. Who are they? But I know this. I know this. Numbers don't mean a thing with God. Mm -hmm. If you say God can't do it with so few a number, all I say is numbers don't mean anything with God. They never have. Jonathan and his armor bearer. David and Goliath. Gideon and his 300. I go right on down the list. Mm -hmm. Numbers mean nothing with God. Zechariah 4, 6, not by numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. God looks not on the numbers of Israel, because numbers don't bring success. Yeah. Is it possible it may be a, 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 a literal number? I guess it is. Is it possible it's a symbolic number? I guess it is. Uh, but you can't argue that it can't be literal because it could be. God could do it with one. I don't think one would. I don't think it will be one, but he could. Pretty simple. Now, the rapture. And I want you to notice how carefully the devil devised this theory to destroy the great landmarks of Adventist teaching. And if you've never looked at it that way before, I invite you to look at it that way. They say the, thief com the Lord comes like a thief in the night. I'm, we're going to get to the details from them. The popular teaching is you're on a plane, going through the air, the rapture comes. What happens when you look around? <laughs> you hope the pilot didn't get rapture, right? Hope the pilot's a pagan, hope the pilot's an atheist, you know, and they're gone. That's the popularization of the Left Behind series, right? Yeah. Thief in the night. Now, brief history of the secret rapture. It was not even here a, long, a little while ago. There was no such thing as a rapture. Nobody taught it, nobody, you know. The doctrine of the secret rapture emerged during the early 19th century through the teachings of a guy named John Darby. Mm. Darby was, yeah, he was when the, the Lord raised up the Advent movement, the devil raised up Darby to give a contradicting message that would, that would eradicate everything Seventh-day Adventists were teaching. Darby's dispensation, now if you don't know these words, futurist and dispensationalism, don't worry. We're going to get to it in a second. It is as plain as the day. But don't, don't, don't stumble over that now. 
Darby's presentation distinguished sharply between Israel and the church. Uh, let me back up. Darby was one of the earlier, early leaders of the Plymouth Brethren movement, and his teachings became known as dispensationalism. Darby's dispensationalism distinguished sharply between Israel and the church. The former was earthly, he believed, and the latter heavenly. Again, a little confusion. Don't stumble yet. God had two distinct peoples in separate plans for each. Thus, Darby understood Old Testament prophecies as applying... Ah, a little clearer now. The Old Testament prophecies, Daniel 9, Daniel 7, Ezekiel, applied only to who? Israel. Israel. Uh, rather than spiritualizing such prophecies... He expected a literal fulfillment of God's promise to who? Literal Israel, the Jews. So when, according to dispensational thought, so when, according to dispensational thought, would God fulfill the prophecies to Israel? During the thousand years, the millennium, after Jesus, after his second coming. So in order for God to resume these plans for Israel, Darby believed God would first need to remove the church from the world. That's his rapture. Mm -hmm. Hence arose a need for the secret rapture. Darby had, in effect, proposed something new. A two-stage return to Jesus. Jesus would first come secretly to take his people. Boom! Rapture! There it goes. My, my clicker got raptured. Sorry. <laughs> That's a rapture. Caught up is what the word means. My clicker got raptured. <laughs> but I'm still here. Does it work? Hope so. See me. Yeah. Darby had, in effect, proposed something new, a two-stage return of Jesus. Jesus would first come to rapture the church and then return again. Ah, visible. Seen by all. Okay. Now, let me add one more thing, then we look, in the, we look at the details. The exact meaning, timing, and impact of the events are disputed among Christians, and the term is used in at least two senses, because Seventh-day Adventists use the term rapture too. I believe in the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, rapture, they're caught up together, but hold on. Uh, in the pre-tribulation view, a group of people will be left behind on earth after another group, literally, boom, raptures to meet the Lord in the air. This is now the most common use of the term, especially among fundamentalist Christians in the United States. Yeah, we believe in a rapture too. We'll get to the Seventh-day Adventist belief in a second. What to do if you miss the rapture? So let's say, let's say we're sitting around here and boom, half Iron City's gone. <laughs> half of Waynesboro's gone. We missed it, we're still here. Yeah, answer. Read the top of the blackboard if you can. What to do if you miss the rapture? And the answer is what? There's a second chance. And you say, why does the world embrace the rapture theory? That's why. Because when it all falls apart, you can still slip in the back door to heaven. Yeah. And that's why this is so... Now, with the, what's on the blackboard? Let me blow it up a little bit. I'm going to put a pointer there. you got to read... Yeah. you got to have good eyes there, right? Oh, yeah. Left behind. Now, wait a second here. Yeah. Here comes trouble. Now, just hold on a second. Don't read too much of that yet. Get your mind all polluted. <laughs> Rapture. Oh, wait, well, hold on. We're going to get some, some charts here. Rapture. A, 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 a feeling of intense pleasure, joy. Now, I believe in that. Let me jump forward and jump back. To meet the Lord in the air. Is that a feeling of pleasure and joy? Yeah. Yes, that's, just, that's the rapture. Uh, the feeling of intense pleasure, joy. Lenore listened with rapture. Synonyms, ecstasy, bliss, euphoria, those things. Or number two. Somebody read number two. The transporting of believers to heaven at the second coming of Christ. Yeah. So it's got different things. Just a feeling. And yeah, so there it is. Uh... We are who alive and who are left. That's where they get left behind. Mm -hmm. We're going to, we're, we're, we, you know, and, but yeah, somebody's meeting the Lord in the air. Now, if you look at, uh, let me put my, put my glasses on for the first of the Psalms 417. Let's put my glasses on for this. 
See the blue and the green rapture of the church? Mm -hmm. What's the word after rapture of the church? Tribulation. So, now wait. If the church is raptured before the tribulation, then during the tribulation, the church is gone. Is gone. Right? And then you have the second coming. With the church, oh, they're coming down. Yeah, second coming with the church, and then you got the thousand years. <laughs> now, there is some truth <clears throat> mixed in with that error. Yeah. But the rapture theory teaches seven years of tribulation. Yeah. Daniel, 70 weeks. If you don't know what this is saying, it just put a match to Daniel 8 and Daniel 9. Because you notice in here, I'm not trying to go through the whole chart. See where it says 445 B.C., the 49 years, mm -hmm. Jerusalem rebuilt, 434 years. That's using, this is their title, Daniel 70 weeks. Mm -hmm. But each day is a year, so seven days is seven years, mm -hmm. 70 weeks is 490 years. Mm -hmm. The last week would be how many years? The last seven. week would be how many years? Because seven. Seven. seven days, seven years. They took the last week of Daniel, the 70th week, and stuck it where? After the, the rapture. They cut off the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy and moved it down a couple, couple thousand years. Futurists, and now, and now we get to it. Futurists see, got this off of, you know, this is like Wikipedia rapture teachings. Futurists see eschatology, study of last day events. Eschatological passages being fulfilled during a future time, primarily during the 70th week of Daniel. 70th week of Daniel is where? In the future. We say it's where? In the past. If they're right, then we're wrong. wrong. At the second coming of Christ and during the millennium. While all dispensationalists are futurists, not all futurists are dispensationalists. What does that mean? Oh, it's underlined is what it means. Futurists also are also the most literal in the interpretation of prophecy passages. In other words, in the book of Revelation, a Jew means a Jew. And we say a Jew doesn't mean a Jew. We say Babylon is not Babylon. The rebuilding of Israel is not talking about Jerusalem. Well, I got, got rapture, but it got ruptured too, I guess. Anyway, it took some heat on the rapture. And I said, yeah, the more literal an interpretation one adopts, mm -hmm. the more strongly will be, he will be construed to be a futurist. I know it's a little fo foggy still. Four categories of judgment. Now, the first... The church age. Yeah, this is all rapture teaching. First coming of Christ. The church age. Then your seven years of tribulation based on the 70th week of Daniel. Uh, rapture, removal of church. Church age saints. Then the second coming of Jesus. The millennial kingdom for a thousand years. Uh, four category. I'm not sure what that chart means. But I know what this one means. I blew it up so you can see it. Does anybody have eyes that are sharp enough to see what that first on the left arrow is pointing to? The first uh, resurrection translation of the saints. And, yeah. Let me, did I blow it up? Uh, let's see. I, I missed the first one yet. The first, what's it say? The first? Resurrection translation of the saints. Okay, the, yeah. the, the, there's the translation, right? The first resurrection. Now, that word, uh, that word heptad, heptad means a group of seven. That's all it means. Now, gathered in unbelief, uh, Daniel's 70th week, or heptad of years, comes after the... Uh, but now, look at the uh, arrow over there. It says a remnant saved. The last half of the week. Then what does it say? 42 months, 1260 years. Yeah, that's the 1260 years of dark age papal power and put on the other side of time. They have killed our interpretation of Daniel 7, Daniel 9, Daniel, the whole book of Daniel. The 1260 days of darkness and persecution, 
that's at the end. The 70th week of Daniel, that's at the end, hasn't happened yet. Which opens for this kind of teaching. Yeah. A lot of people are talking about this and keeping track of this. Let me tell you what it's all about. Spearheaded by the Temple Mount and the Land of Israel faithful movement. The rebuilding of their people are waiting to see what? The temple rebuilt in Jerusalem as a sure sign the Lord's about to come. They're looking. If the Jews get together and build something, so what? <laughs> the rebuilding of the Jewish temple and restoration of the ancient Jewish sacrificial system are making great studies in Israel's progress towards the fulfillment of her prophesied redemption. One of the most, got your eyes on the wrong Israel. One of the most frequently asked questions in regard to the tribulation time period is, who read it? Will there be a second chance for salvation after the rapture? My question, will there be a second chance for salvation after the rapture? No. Answer, well, according to the, the, the Darby, there will be many people who come to Christ during the tribulation. They won't be the 144,000 because they are composed of Jews. The 144,000 Jews, Jewish witnesses, are Jewish believers. If no one can come to Christ during the tribulation, then why are people being beheaded for their faith? No passage of Scripture argues against people having a chance to be saved after the rapture. Many passages indicate the opposite. Now, let me just ask you a question. If you read and study this kind of thing, does it confuse your mind? Yeah. Yeah. It's just you would walk out of class absolutely drunk on the wine of Babylon. This is as close as I want to get to it. I had to get a little close to be able to put it down here. And, but, but all the things, and I don't want to read it. 42 months, everything we hold near and dear, and you know, it's just it's all wadded up, and thrown in the trash. Why? Because they teach, you get a second chance. I know people like that. Yeah. Once it's done, it's done. There is a point where it's done. That's all. There's a point where it's done. Now, the next time we meet, I'd like to study the point at which it's done and then go back to the Sunday Law up until the point at which it's done, which we call the that's all we call it. Fancy word for it. It's done. Mm -hmm. yeah, no more second chances. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, dangerous to even remember what she told D.M. Canwright. Don't even, I'm not even going to read that letter. Yes. I'm afraid that will stick in my mind. And uh, let, me, let me just back up to that one picture. You can't see it. The writing so small. I mean, I looked at that. I have never seen such crazy stuff in all my life. Now wait, does that man have a PhD? Yes. Is he? Is he? Is, is his vocabulary very uh, developed? Is he very sharp in a worldly sense? Does that man have a? Does he have a presentations there to draw the people? And uh, what do you do if you miss? Don't worry. <sighs> yeah. Now. Yeah, don't, just don't read it too closely. As you glance at that, dear friends, let me tell you what's missing. There's not one reference on the whole list. And when they say something and they have a reference, I agree with them. And they got they got they have what we teach. They got a reference, and I agree. There is going to be a translating of the saints. But the rest of it they got a reference about. So why don't we make sure we have a good foundation for our faith? Know what you believe. If you don't understand Daniel 7, Daniel 9, Daniel 2, you ought to get busy studying it. And I'm not saying go to these commentaries and everything. Get the Bible, ask God to teach you. By the Spirit that convicts you is the Spirit that teaches you. Luke 12, verse 12, they shall be taught of the Holy Spirit. I'll pray as we end our simple class this morning. All right, our Father in heaven, that rapture is a labyrinth. It's a maze of confusion and chaos. And, and then I look at our truth, 
And it is so simple, so clear, so easy to understand. Thank you for giving us the advantage of having the truth just before Christ comes. And as we share it with others, give us wisdom to know what to say and when to say it. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.